welcome to the first video in the Freight Dog Piston series. So in this video we're going to cover pre-flight inspection, engine start, taxi checks, and all the way to the run-up. And we're going to have a separate video for the run-up and we're going to go into depth on the engine and its operating mechanics when we get to the run-up portion of this series. But for right now, I'm going to show you how to get into this aircraft and how to get it airworthy and ready to go. So first thing we notice when we get to the aircraft, um, we want to make sure that in the real aircraft, there's a couple hot battery items, such as this nose compartment light here. If it's on, we want to make sure that it's off. Uh, also, the cargo light, this whole area would be cargo. Um, and that has a lamp back there that is also a hot battery item. And then there is uh, one other hot battery item. I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but... Definitely want to check for those two. And then uh, we would get in the aircraft and actually power up the airplane and do a lights check. So we'll get in real quick, turn the master switch on, and we want to make sure that we do it very quick because you will drain your battery and then you will not be able to start it. So as we have the lights on, we'd walk around landing and taxi light, our ice light, position a rec or I'm sorry, our recog lights and position lights in the wingtips there, our beacon tail position light, right nav light and strobe, as well as the recog or recognition light. Run back in, immediately turn your lights back off, and kill the batteries, because the aircraft will drain pretty rapidly on that battery, and then you could have issues starting. So that was always kind of a quick jump in, run around, come back in and turn the lights off. Now something else that is not modeled unfortunately is these this fuel boost pump here circuit breakers five and six now in the real aircraft these are hot uh hot battery items as well or no i'm sorry they're not hot battery items that wouldn't make any sense these are um continuous operating boost pumps so when you turn power onto the aircraft and these boost pumps are in you're going to automatically start pushing fuel to the engines and you can get your engines flooded. So in the real aircraft, those circuit breakers are actually popped out until we're ready to start the engine. So we would make sure those are popped out. Once you get in the aircraft, we're doing our basic, you know, make sure our throttles are at idle, props full forward, make sure idle cut off. We would come down here, check our trims, make sure that they are all in the green. Also our cow flaps, make sure that they are open. Coming over to the right-hand side of the cockpit here, we have a couple other indicators that we need to look at. We want to make sure that our heating elements here are free of movement. We want to make sure they move freely, as well as our cabin air and cockpit air. Make sure that those aren't binding. Things to take note, what we have down here, we have uh, manual and alternate, or manual alternate uh, pedostatic right here. We would verify those. And I don't know. So yeah, in the real airplane, when you pull on these, what would happen is you'd get a slight jump in your altimeter setting just because you're changing pressure if you're changing static static port locations when you use the alternate static but also our fan make sure it's off heater is off flaps are in the up position and that they're indicating up now in the real aircraft these flaps are notorious for having an asymmetry asymmetrical deployment so there's a couple different methods that uh Piper went ahead and installed on the aircraft to keep asymmetry from happening. And what asymmetry is, is when you deploy the flaps, one flap will deploy either more or the other flap won't deploy. Basically, you get an uneven flap flap extension, and that can, that can induce an uncontrollable roll to the left or right. So anytime that you are operating the flap handle, we're always told to keep our hand on that flap lever until the flaps reached their position or desired position as indicated right here. You can do a cabin exhaust. Basically what this is, a couple other gauges to note here on this front panel is our oxygen supply. So we actually, I didn't have this. We had to use supplemental oxygen. This looks like it has an onboard oxygen tank, which you can go ahead and turn on. You can see we have PSI, but we're not going to use that typically unless we're above, you know, 10,000 feet or uh, depending on what flight rules you're operating under, you may have to turn them on a little bit higher. But for us, when I flew it, we had to carry supplemental oxygen if we were on a route that made us climb that high. We have a voltmeter over here. 
fuel pressure gauge. So this is respected for the left and right engine. There's a couple gauges over here that are very important to us. We're going to be looking at them throughout the duration of any flight. And so aside from your standard six pack, you have two gauges that have three different indications on them and they're identical. So one is for the left engine, one is for the right engine. Oil pressure for left and right respectively, that is pretty self-explanatory. We have oil temperature, pretty self-explanatory. Then we have something labeled CYL. This is our cylinder head temperature. This is the temperature of the cylinders in the engine. Now this can fluctuate greatly depending on the position of the cow flaps on the engine. And we control this temperature by the use of those cow flaps. So if the engine is cold, we need to close the cow flaps so that the engine exhaust manifold will produ produce heat and it will stay in the cowling, keep the engine warm. Now, how does that work? Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I gotta turn the battery on to demonstrate this. And as we come to the right engine, we are looking at the right engine cow flap. And if I accelerate the time here a little bit so we get a little bit brighter, you can see that this is an exhaust stack. And when I close the cow flap, oops, we don't want to do that. That was the engine start. When I close the cow flap, it closes the gap where the header comes down from the engine. So we're not using exhaust gas to heat the engine. We're using the ambient heat that's coming off of the header pipe from the engine itself. So if that cowl flap is closed, you're obviously capturing heat that's coming off of this uh, exhaust header. Now, it's important to know that we're not capturing the exhaust because that's actually a problem. If you have a cracked exhaust header, you will be leaking carbon monoxide into your, uh, into your aircraft. So if you have the cowl flaps closed and your exhaust is cracked, and you pull that cabin air valve on, you're going to get air from inside of this compartment here. And if this is a crack, you can get carbon monoxide poisoning in the airplane. So that's another reason why you'll see those carbon monoxide detectors on their chieftains that I was flying. That will pretty much take care of the cockpit overview, if you will. So let's go ahead and remove the static elements and get ready to do a engine start. Now after the aircraft has been uh, deactivated again and the battery has been turned off, we come back out and we do a, a rest of our pre-flight. And we would go ahead and start uh, at the nose of the aircraft, walk around it kind of like I did. And uh, at the very end of that walk around, we actually come way under here and we do a fuel sump check. So this is actually a fuel sump right here. and what you take is you take a sump bottle and you press that sump bottle into that hole and you'll drain fuel out of the tank. So the Piper Chieftain and Navajo have four fuel bladders. We have two in each wing. We have an inboard and an outboard in each wing. And what we're doing when we do that fuel sump check is to make sure that there is no contaminants in the fuel. So if there's water in the wings, especially if it's been sitting out in the rain or there's been condensation, that water weighs heavier than avgas, and what'll happen is it'll go to the bottom of the tank. And when it goes to the bottom of the tank, we can sump it out, and we can make sure that uh, we can identify, hey, there's water in our tank, we need to fix this problem. Hopefully that's not the case, um, but if it were, then you would have an issue on your hands. So that's just a little added detail of the walk around doing the fuel sump check. Uh, we would also make sure that the propellers are uh, smooth on their leading edge and trailing edge. We don't want any nicks. Sometimes you land and you kick up rocks and stuff and you'll get nicks and burrs in your propeller and you can get some uh, vibrations. And also you can get enhanced or accelerated metal fatigue. And you could even, you know, in a severe case, have, have a prop failure or something like that. So it's very important to make sure that there is no nicks or dents on the leading edges of the propellers.
All right, so the aircraft has been pre-flighted. The chocks have been removed. Static wicks have uh, been, oh, I'm sorry, the uh, pitot-static covers have been removed, and we are good to start the aircraft. It gets pretty hot. I tend to keep the little window open here. So engine start. We're going to get our batteries on. We're going to go to the overhead panel. Make sure our nav light is on the position mode and our anti-collision light is on. If you have seatbelts, you can go ahead and turn those on. We, those switches were deactivated for us as we weren't carrying passengers. And then what we're going to do is we need to prime the engines. One thing I forgot to note, and it's actually very important, is before you turn your master battery switch on, is you want to make sure that your fuel selector is in the inboard position for both wings, left and right. The selector panel for the Navajo is located between the pilot seat and the co-pilot seat on the floor facing upside down. So it's meant to be read if you're looking at it from the seat down, but you want to make sure you locate this fuel selector panel and make sure both fuel selector levers are in the inboard position. We will cover the use of the selectors further on in this series. So we're going to go ahead and go fuel boost pumps on. Watch our fuel pressure rise there. Two seconds for the throttle and the mixture. Now we are primed and ready to start. So we're going to go ahead and start the right engine first. And the reason we do that is in case of an engine fire, we would be able to exit the aircraft. Now that was our procedure because we actually, if you had cargo, you were not able to go out the back of the aircraft. And our way of entry was through a cutout right here for a cockpit door. So this was actually a door frame and we'd come in and out of the cockpit. So if something went wrong on the first engine start, we'd be able to get out of the airplane and uh, be safe, essentially. So I like to just crack the mixture a little bit and then we have to make sure that our magnetos are on for the right engine. All right, with our engines primed, we are ready to start. Go ahead and crack the right throttle about one handle width. I like to prime the right mixture just a little bit as well. And we're gonna rock the starter to the right, wait for the engine to engage and go full rich. Once the engine ignites, we want to bring our RPM back down to a thousand and go ahead and start leaning that mixture back to about the halfway point for where we are on the ground right now. Now as I do that you can see I got a little bit hot there, the EGT went skyrocketing. So we're going ahead and go ahead and put a little bit more mixture back in. We'll keep it right about there. 1000 RPM and just lean it uh, about an inch or two. So we're going to repeat that process for engine number one. Since we know where the 1000 RPM mark is now, we're just going to go ahead and match the throttles and crank the left starter. Left engine is coming up to 1000 RPM. Let's go ahead and pull that mixture back right about where the other one is. Alright, once the engine is started, go ahead and turn on our alternators and turn on the avionics. Alright, now that our engines are started, we're going to go ahead and set our flight instruments for whatever is necessary. So I like to set runway heading for now since it's just going to be a visual VFR departure. We would go ahead and set our radios, our ATIS, our ground controller, whatever it may be. We will go ahead and get that now. And we would also probably import a flight plan if we were going to do a, a GPS flight plan. So I'm just going to throw one in here to Hayward as a backup. Alright. 
if you need a 430, or I'm sorry, Garmin 530 tutorial, um, I might be able to help you guys with that at some point down the road, but hopefully you are familiar enough with this Garmin. Um, if not, I'm sure there's probably some good content out there regarding on how to operate basic Garmin uh, flight plans and stuff. The majority of our flying is going to be done with the HSI, however. And we'll go ahead and turn our... We'll just go ahead and keep this off right here, our radar. radar. That's... Uh, shouldn't really have that in the freight airplane. <laughs> At least ours never really worked anyway, so. All right, we are started up. The cow flaps are open. Doors are closed. We're gonna go ahead and get our taxi light on. Uh, release the parking brake. Now, with this aircraft, it's very common to use uh, your thrust or your throttle levers <clears throat> to assist you in turning. So the nose wheel can turn 40 degrees left and, I'm sorry, can turn 20 degrees left and right. And on the Chieftain, I believe it was able to caster free for a total of 80 degrees of uh, travel, but I don't think the Navajo had the free castering. So if you need to make a sharper turn, use your thrust. So if you want to turn right, we're going to increase power on that left engine to really help you pivot the aircraft around. This is the use of differential thrust. It's very, very helpful for taxiing this aircraft on the ground. It's very apparent in the real aircraft as well, so I'm glad that um, they've got it modeled pretty well. If you really want to feel the effects of the engines, go ahead and just practice S-turning across the taxiway here. So go ahead and increase that right throttle, and you'll see the aircraft, without moving the rudder pedals, the aircraft comes to the left really nicely. Bring the right to idle, get the left one back up, and that will bring the nose back to the right. So you can really get a feel for taxiing this airplane with differential thrust. Go ahead and exercise a flight control check. Make sure nothing is binding. Now most takeoffs were done with the flaps in the up position. So we're gonna go ahead and keep the flaps up for now, unless it was really necessary for us to uh, use them, we would try to keep the flaps up takeoff. You really only need about a thousand RPM uh, on this airplane for taxiing it, depending on your weight, a uh, thousand RPM is pretty, pretty good. You don't wanna ride the brakes. You don't want so much power to where you have to keep stepping on the brakes, because you'll start to wear the brakes out pretty quick. All right, as we come to the taxiway here, we're going to go ahead and flip it around and perform an engine run-up. All right, once you are stopped, bring your throttles back to 1,000 RPM and set the parking brake. All right, let's go ahead and turn on a little bit of cockpit lighting here. All right, we've got our lights on, we can see what we're doing. Now, this is when we start executing the engine run-up check. All right, guys, that's where we're going to end this video. We're going to wrap it up right there before we commence the engine run-up procedures. That video is going to get pretty in-depth talking about the mechanics of the engine and constant speed propellers and how the turbocharger works. So I thought it would be best if we separate that into two separate videos. I hope you were able to follow along, and I hope you are enjoying this series so far. I will catch you guys on the next episode very soon. Hope you all have a blessed day wherever you are. Catch you next time.